Thank you for your questions. Um, first question I have is what can be done about abuse that was committed years ago, even decades ago? Is there a statute of limitations? Well, generally no. For criminal sexual offences, the Queensland Police Service take those offences extremely seriously and there's no statute of limitations. If it happened 10 years ago, if it happened 20 years ago, and you wish to make a complaint to police, go to your local station, ask for your Child Protection Investigation Unit, uh, and we will take that complaint. If it is a serious and complex uh, matter, one that requires interstate, international, uh, interjurisdictional, within regions, if it involves multiple victims, it may even come to the Child and Sexual Crimes Unit here in town at uh, Police Headquarters. But please, if you've been a victim of child abuse, speak out, tell the police, we will listen, we will investigate. Furthermore, if you don't wish to report the matter to police, we have great relationships with uh, non-government agencies like Bravehearts, who will accept and talk to, your, talk to you about abuse, uh, and they can help you as well. They're fantastic people, and I please reach out and talk to someone. Now, the next question I have is, what should you do if there were never any witnesses to your abuse? Quite often, and more often than not, there are no witnesses to this type of criminal behaviour. Um, it's not an impediment to us doing an investigation. Police use quite sophisticated techniques to get to the bottom of these matters. You should always tell someone that you trust what's happened about your concerns. In cases of abuse, you can always consider reporting the matter to the Queensland Police. For children who are victims of abuse, they should tell a, child, a parent, a grandparent, a teacher, someone that they can trust. Police have got quite sophisticated investigation techniques and we will use all our resources to get to the bottom of child abuse. Never be in any doubt that we want to use the full extent of our investigative capacity to find out what occurred. The next question we have is, do police still go around to schools and do the stranger danger talk? Well, the short answer is yes, but the stranger danger talk has evolved over the years with the sophistication of technology uh, and this is the way stranger danger appears in the community today. QPS reaches out to the community in a number of different forums. Uh, we provide advice and guidance to students on a variety of topics including surf safety on the internet, who's chatting to your kids. We also have a protective behaviours program and facilitators in all Queensland police regions with access to resources and training kits. These officers are able to facilitate community presentations and provide internal training to police officers to allow them to do these community presentations. From personal experience, I can tell you that if you contact your local police, they will come out to your daycare centre, they will come out to your school and they will give you a range of protective behaviour skills and talks which give your kids the tools to protect themselves into the future. Also in this space, the Daniel Morecambe Foundation does a fantastic job. Only as late as uh, yesterday, they are at Bar Colden engaging with school communities. And I note the Minister was strongly encouraging all schools to adopt that curriculum. Um, I also encourage all schools to adopt that foundation as well. The next question I have is, are there any books, videos or websites you can recommend that can help us educate our young children on stranger danger and what to do if they're approached? Uh, the QPS has produced an award-winning program called Who's Chatting to Your Kids and it's available on the QPS website. That's www.police.qld.gov.au. This booklet contains a wealth of information for parents and caregivers regarding the dangers associated on the internet, along with helpful tips and practical advice for parents to ensure the risk for their children is minimised. The Australian Communications Media Authority are also responsible for managing CyberSmart, which is a national cyber safety and cyber security education program. I encourage you to go to that website as well. There's a lot of internet questions obviously today. The next one is, can you offer any advice to parents whose children are starting to use the internet? What's the best way to keep them safe online? Like learning to cross the street or any valuable lesson we can teach our kids, the rules you need to teach them in the real world also apply online. Having direct and open communication with your child is vital in sitting down and talking to them to discuss issues of safety on the internet. Having an open line of communication with your child allows your child to talk freely and approach you when something goes wrong. So I encourage you to talk to your children, be open, be honest and make them aware. 
Next question is, can parents be charged for setting up social networks for underage children? The answer is no. However, all social media um, sites have terms of use which will prevent minors from being on them and they will all have a minimum age. Parents are best to review the particular social medium that their children are involved in and check their local terms and conditions. Who do I contact about truant children? Parents and caregivers have a key role in ensuring their, their kids attend school every single day. Each parent of a child who is of compulsory school age must ensure that that child is enrolled and attends school every day unless that parent has a reasonable excuse. You should contact your local school where the children are enrolled and seek further information for the Department of Education and Training. The process for legal action in relation to truancy um, sits with the Chief Executive Officer of Queensland Education. You can also inform one of our school-based police officers and in this space there are 15 more school-based police officers being integrated into our schools over the next few months um, and it's on track for delivery. The next question I have is what should you do if you see a child approached by strangers in a playground? Well look, everyone has a right to feel safe. You as a parent also have to ensure the safety of your child. If you observe a person approach your child in a public space such as a playground and the circumstances cause you alarm, you need to take intervention action um, to make sure your child stays safe. This may include approaching the, the person who's talking to the child. If there are immediate concerns for the safety and others, you should consider calling the police on triple zero if life-threatening or requires urgent attention. We'd also say um, you could make a note of the offender if you can take photographs on your, uh, on your smartphone, um, but if only do so if you can do so safely. Don't do anything which endangers yourself, but the priority is to ensure that that child is safe. Is it criminal for a father to give his 10-year-old daughter an old mobile phone with lewd or pornographic images on it? This is a no-brainer, of course it is. It's a contravention of the Criminal Code Act. Um, it's, a wilf it's an offence to willfully expose a child under the age of 16 years to any indecent object, any indecent film, videotape, audio tape or picture. The maximum penalty for this type of offence ranges from 14 to 20 years. I've got several questions on when it's appropriate and what age can kids be left alone. I've got um, at what age can a child be left alone at home unsupervised? Is it true that it's illegal for kids to walk to school without a parent or an adult? What age can children go together to the park without adult supervision? There's a number of questions on these. The answer is quite simple. Quite simply, a child under the age of 12 cannot be left alone. But this is a matter of common sense for your children and for yourselves as parents. As a final message, it's been Child Protection Week this week and it's been a fantastic week for child protection. There's been several activities across the state, across the country. Um, the general message I'd like to leave to you today, particularly when it comes to abuse and particularly leading into White Balloon Day today, that's tell someone. It doesn't have to be the police, tell a friend, tell a neighbour, tell a teacher, tell someone you trust. Tell Bravehearts, tell Kids Helpline. Just use the power of your voice, use the power of courage and tell someone.